Good evening, Kong Center aspirants. Welcome to your Wednesday habit, Torch and Plot. So, another Wednesday ulit and we're already on our 7th episode. Parang kailan lang, no? Since we aired our first episode. Um, I hope the previous episodes have somehow helped you with your video applications and interviews. And for tonight, we will be discussing what are the things to consider before clicking that apply button. And we will be joined tonight by Ms. Rhea. Uh, hi, Ms. Rhea. Thank you for joining us tonight. Please greet our listeners. Good evening, Ms. Shai. And good evening, dear listeners, our call center aspirants. And please allow me to also say hi to my family. I hope you're cozy there at home. And to everyone who is listening, hope you are having an amazing night so far. Sa mga pauwi pa lang po, ingat po tayo. Ayan, ingat po tayo. And whether you're stuck in traffic or comfortably staying at home, please stay tuned because we will be having an interesting topic tonight. Interesting indeed, Miss Shai, especially now that we just copped off the graduation season, meaning we also have a lot of job seekers. So job seekers, most especially call center aspirants, listen up. What are the different things to consider before clicking that apply button? First things first, Ms. Rhea, um, aspirants must create a competent resume or curriculum vitae. Make sure that uh, you put your contact details, your educational background, your work experiences, or any internship experiences, um, skills as well, and of course, your character references. So there are actually a lot of templates which you can download online that can help you in creating a competitive resume. And if you're going to put a photo, a graduation photo is the best option, or any formal photos, just don't put your selfies. Of course, and... Creating a resume is really um, important because it would be the first um, thing that the company will be looking into. So after creating your resume, um, you should also be ready to create your work email. So it's really important to separate your work email from your personal email so that you can check updates from your applications from time to time and make sure that the format of your email will be formal. So just that format is your name. Just don't put any sexy chick or I am pogi for because formal email po dapat since you're now transitioning to adult life and applying for a real job, not simply registering in any social media platforms. Right, that's actually correct, Ms. Rhea. And after creating a resume, you are now ready to, um, your email rather, is really important, especially now that uh, recruitment process is done both on-site and off-site. And usually, off-site interviews are conducted via Zoom, Google Meet, or other meeting platforms, um, online meeting platforms. And application updates as well are also sent via email. So, it's really best to have a separate email intended for work and job applications. And to add, there are also job portals that would require you to create a profile and upload your resume, such as best jobs, Job Street and even Facebook. So now, given that you are already done with the prerequisites, my resume na kayo and my work email na rin kayo. So you're now in the back searching for the job. Next thing to do is to know what you are really looking for. So let's say, for example, you are searching for a call center job. Be mindful of the title of the job postings because most of the time, sa title pa lang, you would already have an idea what the vacancy is all about. If you still need to know more about the job, look at the job responsibilities. And next is the job qualifications or candidates profile. Right. Um, title, Ms. Raya, that's actually a good point because usually, sa title, nakala- nakalagay na rin ang location ng available position. Like, for example, uh, customer service representative for Davao side or customer service representative for Cebu side. And this is an important detail we as job seekers should not miss out. One common mistake is masyadong malayo from where you are situated ang location ng trabaho. And most of the time as well, call center companies do not offer relocation package. So it would really be your own expense. Uh, may mga ilan, but it is just usually on the first month of employment. And um, as discussed in the previous episodes, applying for a call center job has different stages and 70% at present is conducted on-site. So before sending that application and deciding to apply for that job that is far from where you are currently residing, you have to make sure that your resources are ready like your transportation allowance, your meal and accommodation allowance as well, and it should suffice until your first paycheck. 
that is a good point, Meshai. Kasi sa call center, the recruitment process would only take 48 hours most of the time. Mahaba na ang 4 weeks. It really depends on the urgency of the job vacancy, the bulk of the applicants, and also the manpower of the recruitment team. But madalas, 48 hours after you submitted your application, you will be considered as hired already and you will be joining the next training class which is immediately on the next day. So before applying, make sure that you can commit to the entire recruitment process and start your training ASAP. Which brings us to our next point. Do not send the call center job application when you are still employed. I repeat, huwag po muna kayong mag-apply kung nagtatrabaho or nag-aaral pa kayo because again, we need people who can start ASAP and can commit to the entire recruitment process. Ms. Ri, um, just a question because um, now I think my work from home setup naman so pwede bang mag multitask? That is a big no, Ms. Shai, actually. This is usually the misconception here. When we say um, accounts or for work from home setup, madalas applicants would dub it as they can do part-time jobs. But um, to tell you honestly, that is not really what's happening. Because even if it is a work from home setup, the workload and even the schedule did not change at all. So even if you're working at home, you still need to work for eight hours, five days a week, shifting schedule, and no fixed weekends off. Mm, okay. Thank you for clarifying that one out, Miss Ray. And um, I just wanna add, lang din dun sa previous point. Another reason why we can't accommodate employed and studying applicants is because we will be asking for your certificate of employment and transcript of record once you are hired. So for you to secure your COE, you need to finish the 30 days mandated transition period and as for students naman, if you will not declare that you're currently enrolled, uh, you still need to provide a document proving that you're not currently studying which is your leave of absence form from your school registrar. Applying for a call center job is really not a walk in a park, my dear aspirants, but the career is indeed rewarding, not to mention the monetary benefits in the industry. So aside from your availability, we also need to check on your job knowledge and skills. So before applying for a call center job, make sure that you already did your rating meaning research on the job itself and as well as the skill set needed for this one. Right. So, once you get hired, uh, there will be a training, but companies are still looking for those who have average communication skills, which means um, applicants that can converse using the English language. Mm-hmm. But there's a clarification. There are some non-voice accounts, right? Yes, there is, but communication skills is still considered because companies are looking for um, applicants that can be proven for voice and land voice because even though if you um, applied for a land voice account, there's still a possibility that the company would be providing you for a voice account. So, you really have to be flexible. Mm-hmm. I see. Now, um, so we were able to discuss the skills and also the commitment needed. May nakalimutan pa ba tayo? That's already it. And now considering that you already did a self-check and was able to come to a conclusion that you are qualified to apply, after sending your resume, please make sure to keep your lines of communication open because usually uh, companies would like give you a call for a pre-screening interview within 24 hours. Exactly. And I just want to re- reiterate this one because this was um, discussed a few um, episodes back. Once you're already is scheduled for an interview, please um, keep your lines open and if you cannot answer, um, contact immediately the company that has scheduled you for an interview. Don't let the recruiter call you multiple times. And to add, if you're still not certain if you are qualified and you still have a lot of questions, you may go ahead and send the company a message through the contact details provided in the job posting. And if there isn't any, you may go ahead and look for the company's website or Facebook page, check on their contact us pane and shoot them a message. And make sure to communicate your concern com- comprehensively and politely as well so that you can also be addressed properly. I think that's a wrap. Thank you so much for your insights, Ms. Rhea. Thank you for spending your uh, Wednesday night with us. Thank you as well for sharing your ideas, Ms. Shali. And no problem, nasa kabilang room lang din naman ako. And thank you so much for staying with 
us, aspirants. Another productive Wednesday night is done. Thank you, aspirants. See you again next week on our next episode. Have a lovely evening, everyone. And once again, this has been Shai and Rhea now signing off.